One of the things I like to do in mathematics is use a very simple idea to prove something that is difficult. And that's what we're going to do today. So here is a very simple idea. Take three coins and two boxes and put the three coins into the two boxes. Now there are four ways to do this. This is the first way, and the second way, and this way, and finally the fourth way. But no matter how you put the three coins into the two boxes, there will always be one box that has more than one coin. We can apply the same idea any time we have more coins than boxes. Let's try to put five coins into three boxes. I start by choosing any one of the boxes and I'll put a coin in. For the next coin, I can't use the first box I selected, so I'll choose another. For the third coin, I can't use the first two boxes, so I'll pick a third. So where can I put the fourth coin? I have to put it into a box that already has a coin. So there will always be one box that has more than one coin. I hope you can see that this simple idea will always work when you have more coins than boxes. So that's our very simple idea. If you have more coins than boxes, there will always be at, lo at least one box that has more than one coin. So let's use this very simple idea to prove something that is for most people difficult. To do this, I'm going to get some inspiration from all things spiders. There's an urban myth, and I don't know, maybe it's true, that you are always within three metres of a spider. It might be under your TV now, or somewhere under a chair near you. So this is what we want to prove. Yesterday, there were at least two people at your workplace that were within three metres of the same number of people. For this problem, I've referred to your workplace, but you may prefer to think of your school if you're a student, or your club if you're a member, or even the suburb you live in. Before we prove this, let's just see what we're talking about here. Here is John at work. Mary talks to him, they argue, and then she leaves. Afterwards, Anne wanders past John and says hello. Mary wasn't happy and returns to argue with John again. At this stage, John was within three metres of two people, Mary and Anne. Mary was, in, was within three metres of only one person, namely John. And the same applies for Anne. So Mary and Anne have been within three metres of the same number of people. We want to prove that there will always be two people who were within three metres of the same number of people. That's what we're going to try and prove. Now you might have a might have hundred people at your workplace, or there may be a thousand people at your school. It doesn't matter to our proof. I'm going to say that there are n people at your workplace. You can make n the right number for your situation. But more importantly, the proof will then work for everybody. Imagine that I start building numbered podiums. Later, I'm going to get people at your workplace to stand on the podium with the number equal to the number of the people who were within three metres yesterday. So with our little example before, John would stand on the podium with the number 2. So let's think about all the podiums that I'll need to make. Remember there are n people at your workplace. What do you think is the lowest number podium that I will need to build? That's right, I might need a podium with a zero on it. Someone at your workplace may have been sick or not at work. Or maybe there's someone who's just very antisocial. Now to try to work out what's the highest number podium I need to build. Remember there are n people at your workplace. Well the most ext extroverted or outgoing sort of person could have been closer than three metres to every person at work, but of course they won't count themselves. So the highest numbered podium I would need to build is one with n minus one on it. Now we come to a critical bit of thinking. Think about the zero podium and the n minus one podium. Could we ever need both? The answer is no. If someone didn't get within three meters of anyone yesterday, 
then there can't be a person who was within three metres of everybody. And it works the other way as well. If someone was, this, was within three metres of every person at work, we need the N minus one podium, but then there couldn't have been a person who was not within three metres of anyone. So then we don't need the zero podium. So there are two cases we need to look at. Either we need the zero podium or we don't need the zero podium. So let's look at the first case. For the first case, I'm going to say that we need the zero podium. So there was someone who was not within three metres of anyone yesterday. Maybe they were sick. So we don't need to put out the N minus one podium. So let's put out all the podiums we might need. And now let's get people to stand on the podium according to the number of people that they were within three metres of yesterday. Now we use the very simple idea. How many podiums do we have? That's right, N minus one. How many people do we have to stand on the podiums? That's right, N people. So there are more people than podiums. So by the very simple idea, there must be at least one podium that has two people on it. And of course, maybe there could be more than two people. That means that those two people were within three metres of the same number of people yesterday. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. The only other case is that we don't need the zero podium. So there may have been a very social person who needs to stand on the N minus one podium. So the podiums are put out like this. Once again, we have N minus one podiums and N people to stand on the podiums. Again, there are more people than podiums. So by the very simple idea, there must be at least one podium with two people or more. Well, that means that those two people were within three meters of the same number of people, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. So we have looked at the only two cases we need to. In both cases, we proved that two people were within a three metre radius of the same number of people yesterday. And so that finishes our proof. I hope you've enjoyed using a very simple idea to prove something difficult.